Folks, this is Joe DeRosa, and I am hitting that big open road in the year 2024 with my new hour, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. Where's it kicking off? Well, it's kicking off right here in New York City at the Gramercy Theater on January 13th, January 19th and 20th. I will be at the Comedy Mothership. Four shows uh, doing my thing in Austin, Texas. February 8th, we got Nashville at Basement East. February 9th, Charlotte at the Underground. February 15th, San Fran at the Swedish American Hall. Folks, I then go on February 16th to Hollywood. San Diego on the 17th. Then in March, we got Palmdale, California. Portland, Oregon. Uh, Seattle, Washington. We're adding more dates every day. Also, reschedules for the dates I just had to cancel are coming up, so keep your eye out. Anyway, you want tickets, you want show info, go to JoeDeRosa.com. That's JoeDeRosa.com for all info and ticket links. And, of course, as always, if you're in New York City, come on down to Joey Rose's. We got a new website, JoeyRoses.com. All the info you need is there. Come have a sandwich and a drink, and we'll see you soon. All right, guys, I have one date left of this two-year tour. It's in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, uh, December 16th. There's only about 100 tickets left, so get on that if you want to see me perform this show for the very last time. Other than that, new year, new tour with the guys from the Impractical Jokers. We're going everywhere. We're going to Highland, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Tempe, Arizona, and we're also going to Miami on that cruise January 22nd, and then we're doing Hollywood, Florida, Tampa, Cincinnati, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, we're doing Foxwoods, Atlanta, Georgia, Mobile, Alabama and a bunch more dates are going to be added. Just go to impracticaljokers.com for those tickets. Taste buds, they come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the Tasties. Welcome to T A S T E Buds. It's good to see you, buddy. The boys are back. Yeah, the boys are back in town. Ain't no fooling around. I have not seen you. In a in human form, I haven't seen you in any form. We've texted and called. You see me in molecular form when, yeah. I, when I when I ship, shape yeah. shape shift. But I have not seen you in. It's got to be a month. It's got to be a full month, right? Um, I don't know. I I I don't have a memory for that. The last time, well, well, we've had, we've had four, I think four episodes where you weren't here yeah you met twice i believe yeah and those were all done consecutively so it's got to be a month it's got to yeah. be yeah. you know four or five weeks or whatever yeah i was about shooting a special yeah just back from chicago everything went as good as it possibly could so that's great that's good um just got the uh links to the to the shows last night actually so i'll start digging into those and uh it'll be out probably in the spring or something like that i'm gonna that's announce great. it with the new tour Oh, that's great. Yeah, maybe like something like maybe first week of June, uh, it'll drop along with the on sale for the new tour. Oh, that's great. Something in there. That's great, man. Yeah. You look good too. Thanks. Did you have you been like working out or something? Yeah, well, I've been I've been it's 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 been a journey. It's been a journey. <laughs> uh, no, I've been I've been eating healthy for I I've been trying to lose weight for the special, particularly and for a couple of things for a bit. It's just that I I hit the threshold where you can see it. But it's been a process. So Yeah, yeah. you look good. You Thanks. look healthy. Yeah. The uh I have a cut on my forehead because uh, I walked into a door. Really? Yes. Explain. I was drunk. Okay. <laughs> and I yeah, walked let's into peel a this door. Onion. <laughs> I was trying to walk out of a bar. Okay. And I thought I was within the f confines of the doorway, and I was not. Were you alone? No, I was with a girl. Oh, this is even better. <laughs> is it someone you've known a long time? Uh, you know. You didn't meet her that night. No, 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 no. No, I already knew this person. And you, you have a, a bruise, so you, you hit it with fervor. She said, I've never seen anybody's head split open that easily. <laughs> oh my God. She goes, you didn't even hit it that hard, okay. and it just split. Dude, it was, I was gushing blood to the point in this bar, like holding the... Uh, we were leaving to go somewhere else, and then I had to go back into the bar and just sit there holding... Now you can't leave. A mound, now you just can't leave, holding a mound of tissues to my head. Were you embarrassed or were you too drunk to be embarrassed? Please please um answer as I moisturize my lips. Um I could use a little chap. I don't have any. Mm, uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be a guilt trip. No. You're not getting this uh, chap. People that share chapstick, I think it's nuts. I agree. Um No, uh I can't tell you if I was I, f I did feel a certain way about it. I don't know if it was embarrassment. Mm. But it was it was more like God damn it, man! I is can't it, believe I just did that. Was it a situation that 
the way it's laid out makes it easy for a person to do it, or was it all you? The next day, when I was thinking about it, I was like, uh, uh, to be honest, I was kind of like, is this a is this some sort of bottom that I've hit? Like I walked into a door, <laughs> like I cut my head open. And when I talked to to the woman I was with, uh, I said, you know, I asked her, and she was like. She goes, no, no. She goes, you, you you barely walked into it. And she was like, it was really just like an honest mistake. Like, you just really, you thought you were like, right. you didn't see it. And you yeah. just hit it. I'm sure the booze had an effect. Yeah. But it wasn't like, I was so drunk, I fell down my stairs. You right, know, it right, wasn't right. one of those. I, you, you ever see those videos where people just walk straight into a, a glass wall or whatever? Yeah. I did that, too. I've, I've done it once. Yeah. Maybe twice. But I was on the road, and I was walking back into a back into a hotel, I think. Into or out, I don't remember, but it was all glass doors, right? And I was walking full speed, and I slammed my whole body face, I slammed right into the wall, the glass wall door, whatever it was. Really? And it went, it made the loudest sound. It was like a, it was like a, a, a vestibule and then the lobby, and it was like, I mean, it sounded like, you know, like, I mean, everyone turned, uh -huh. and the lobby had a lot of people in it. <laughs> and there was a group of like a young, like maybe like 20 year old girls or whatever. I don't know if it was a family, but it was like five or six people. And I remember because I was like, I played it. Like I hit the wall so hard that I went back. I like bounced off of it. And then I was like in shock for a second because you're processing it for that split second. I'm like, can I just walk sure. off? You're hurt. You're embarrassed. Yes. And yes. then you're also trying to make heads or tails out of the situation. Yes. And then I looked around and I don't know if it was necessarily, in that moment I was like, I don't know if it was necessarily apparent it was me. Because I hit it, I bounced off of it, and like... If someone looked right after that, and that, and they might not be able to pinpoint me. Yes. And then I was like, I can't believe I just did that. And I <laughs> swiftly, it was going in. I, I swiftly like opened the next door to go in. And I walked. <laughs> and then I just heard, as soon as I opened the door and started walking, I heard the group of girls and who have the group over there just start hysterical laughing. And I was like, oh, that was Do you mortal. think they knew who they, that you were? No, I don't. I, I, don't, I didn't think that. The... Uh... <laughs> I mean, it was, if it, they it, did, they probably would have thought it was like a thing for the show. There's no Honestly, way. Honestly, uh, right? You know what? That's so funny, dude. If I did do that for the show, I wouldn't even blink. Yeah. You know? they, like, if they knew you, they were probably like, oh, my God, they're doing, like, you know, a thing, you know? But it, uh, there's no gracious way to come out of that. No. There was no. This was kind of late in the evening when this happened. And we were already at we were already at a bar that I felt like wasn't crazy about us being there. <laughs> <laughs> you were at a bar that wasn't crazy about you two being there. No, no, there? just I think anybody at that point. It oh, was one okay, of those. Okay, okay. It was a diving I, joint. I thought were, you were telling me like you were those people. Uh, we were just they, they just didn't really have a welcoming attitude, and I think they were probably happy enough to lose two more people. To get closer to just well, they saw it you up. get up. Little did they know you'd be coming back bleeding. Yeah, and then I just sit there. And by the way, now I'm, you know, I got a six pack of of, of Jack and Jack and diets in me. Uh, you know, right I'm, now. No, no, oh, no, right. no, no. Now, oh, all right. what am I, an animal? I don't. I, Jesus. You said the, by the way, the fact that you thought that that was possible that I was doing that might you went, mean it's time to talk to I somebody. Didn't you preface it with well now? Didn't no, you say I'm the word now? I, I, I meant like at that point in the evening. All right, but you can see where the mishap yeah, yeah, happened. Yeah, I get you. What I'm saying, though, is yeah. that you accepted it so quickly that it could be me doing it right now. No, I went now? <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, good. Yeah. That makes me feel better. All right. uh, so I had a few in me. So I, I don't think I was being the quietest about that I had just busted my head open. <laughs> and I, Were you leveling accusations at other people? No, at the, I wasn't at the leveling. Craftsmanship or something? I, I just was sitting there going, how did I do that? How did <laughs> I do that? I just kept, I was probably really obnoxious. I was bleeding so much that the woman was like, I think we might have to go to the emergency room. No. Like for stitches. And I was like, we we I, we can't I can't handle that right now. We have to figure this out. And luckily, you know it just stopped. Your blood was thin. You think From so? Alcohol. Absolutely. Oh wow! I didn't even think of that. Yeah, absolutely. So the so then why don't people who need blood thinners just drink? And then I believe they do. <laughs> <laughs> Many do. <laughs> That's a way more fun way to thin the blood. Than Did you go to another bar after that? With an open flesh wound? No, nah, we called it a night. That was that was kind of the night stops there. The buck <laughs> stops here at the get head wound. Um, and situation when you got home, dressing bandage. 
No, I just yeah, kind of had kept, a I kept he- holding it. And then eventually it just, eventually like I, you know, you put the napkin to it and no blood is coming out anymore. And that's the end of it. That's how that works. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I went to bed and, and I felt kind of dumb the next day. Um, maybe a little less dumb than I should have. But at the same time, I, here's the thing. I'm klutzy, period. I do shit when I'm dead sober. Klutz that, is a fun word. It is. I've done shit dead sober that is so ridiculous that I've literally said to people around me, I go, I, I haven't been drinking. Like, I, I know it looks like I have, like, but I do that anyway. <laughs> These slurs on my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, like, fallen down just, like, walking and stuff. Like, yeah. I fell out of a cab once. Out of a cab? I was getting out of one of the minivan cabs, and I slid the door open and I went to step out and I didn't realize that the step thing was there. Mm -hmm. And dude, I literally fell forward and landed on the pavement and hit my head and I didn't cut it somehow. I don't know how. Wow. I cracked two windshields with my head. What? Two windshields. Not the same time. In accidents? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I guess so. But what, I mean, what happened? Um, One, I would think I told the story, but I was delivering pizza and I looked down for a second as I was driving to look at the address. And when I looked back up, I had veered and I was like two feet from a parked car. Like I literally was like no way to get out of it. I just went, ah, oh, held the wheel. And I guess I wasn't wearing my belt. So when I came to, the car was in someone's yard. If you remember this, Big ZD was, I had long Eddie Vedder hair. <laughs> Big ZD was thrown about right, my hair. I forgot, and yeah. literally pieces of glass, the windshield glass was in my hair. And the whole thing was <laughs> spidered in every direction. And similar, and similar another. Now, way. here's a question I have about windshield construction. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> is that a crazy just, question? You know, you know, you know those out of context. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Now, here's a question I have about window <laughs> construction. Windshield construction. This is a legitimate question. I actually would would like some responses from people. They're on made this. to not, right? I mean, well, I was going to say, is a windshield. Is that crazy that your head cracked it open or because it's a windshield and it's thick and whatever? Or are windshields made to give more easily than we think because they're like, guys, God forbid you go into this thing. It's, you, you're you better off going through it than if it stops you because if it stops you, you're going to break mean, your neck. That's a good question. If I you had know? to guess, I think they're probably making the windshield as solid as possible. I don't think they're going to manufacture the windshield for on the off chances when people go through them. I think they're going to uh, manufacture them for, you know, quality control and long lasting otherwise they're going to get they're going to have a reputation because then it's going to break you know when a pine cone falls on it or something well this is pimples annealed up. i didn't know that yeah. was a term annealed break. annealed glass yeah. typically breaks around six thousand pounds per square inch so that's what my head hit with okay or psi federal specifications dictate that tempered glass must have a surface compression of at least ten thousand psi it'll usually break around twenty four thousand what's p oh pressure per square inch Pounds. Pounds of pressure, basically. Okay. That's what PSI is. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Well, there you go. Jesus. Um, Well, all of this to say, you look vibrant and healthy. (laughs) I'm sitting here with a gash in my forehead. Um, Oh, we got merch we're supposed to plug. We got new merch. Yeah. Um, We got the logo, finally. Yep. We got... This is a this is a deep cut. I think we need to give it more. Like I think we need to get it out there more because it I don't. It happened in one episode. I'm not sure if we ever referenced it again. I was just talking about this earlier. <clears throat> well, it happened in one episode. I talked about getting bullied when I was a kid by a kid named Roger, and I said Roger squeezed my head <laughs> and I lost it. <laughs> yeah, wait, and then wait. you said we should make it into a shirt. Yes. Lo and behold, Roger squeezed my head. Shirts are available. We finally made it available. This is in my head how I always pictured it. V and I discussed. V brought it to fruition. There it is. Roger walks around right now not knowing that his actions caused you a core memory that yeah. was unpleasant that now has been made into merchandise for sale. Yeah, isn't that wild? public at large. Isn't that wild? His name, his, that's a specific Roger right there. Uh-huh. He walks around. I won't say his last name, but he I, He does yeah. not know it. He yeah. doesn't know. I will tell you this, though. Fans did show up in Pittsburgh with Roger Squeeze My Head shirts that they had made yeah. themselves, and that's when I was like- we got to get on that. We got to make ditch that. These are the ditch days, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Of, I mean, it's the same time period. Yeah. But staring into the ditch, I was younger. Again, how did he squeeze your head? How does that happen? He grabbed like his hands. He was so much bigger than all of us. He could palm my head. 
like, like he like he's, like it was like, a basketball. He's Andre the Giant, yes. and you're like Jimmy Hart. And he reached around like the top of my head and was like squeezing into my temples, basically. So he gra- he palmed he might have reached all the way down to the temples. He, but he was, palmed your head and was squeezing it. Yes. So he genuinely had a hand holding your head like it was a melon. Yeah. My mom lost. Her and he was sh- squeezing it. Yeah. And you were uh, you were rendered uh, immobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hurt. Also, <laughs> he, oh, he was putting pressure on. And were you standing or sitting? I was. I think I was standing. I remember being like bent over. Oh, because like, he was maybe uh, like maybe also pain. pushing down a bit. Yeah, he was like literally like he meant to damage my skull or whatever. Was this he unprovoked? Was, no, I mean, something happened when we were playing. He always bullied me. Okay. And he always picked on me. But we were, na- we were kids in the same suburban neighborhood. And all the kids played together all the time. And even the kids that didn't always get along mm-hmm. ended up playing together. Uh, and then there were yeah, kids the like Roger who had a sack with balls of steel inside of it that would beat you up in your own home as your mother was just in the other, like, inside the <laughs> That's house. That's insane. Like, so, That's so, insane. So, like, the nuts on this kid, like, yeah. my mom came out and, like, screamed at him and made him leave. But I'm like, that is, it didn't dawn on me. I was like, because I kind of thought, like, it's my backyard. I'm, I'm like, safe. This is base. I, w- I would think so. You weren't you weren't home home field territory, right? No, didn't. Wow, matter. that's wild. That Roger would disregard home field advantage. <laughs> it's crazy. And any authority that stands by. I'll tell you this. Would you would you allow me to do something? And I want you to think about it before you answer. Is it squeezing my head? No. Okay. Would you allow me to get Roger on this podcast and interview him? Yeah, I don't care. Really? We became friendly when we got older. Does I, he fact- know he squeezed your head? I Does don't he know that that's a moment you remember. I, he, did he? You became friends as you got older, and the bulliness went away. Like and I lost. Oh yeah, when when we get this was when we were eight or ten or I don't remember. But but when we got into our teens, uh, my okay. So growing up, my oldest friend in the world is Scott Hoffman, and Scott and I are still very close to this day. Scott and I, in fact, you met Scott once on my birthday. Yes. Yeah. So he's my oldest friend in the world, and we're very close. Scott and Roger went to high school together. Scott became friends with Roger. Like, he, we knew Roger because, we, again, we were in the right. same neighborhood. But Scott became actually quite friendly with Roger through high school. Okay. And I very much this saw it the as a betrayal. Yeah. <laughs> I would, too. He squeezed your head. And Scott would be like, I'm telling you, dude, he's like, he's not that guy anymore. Like, he's a nicer guy, like whatever. And then sure enough, when I met him, re-met him or reconnected with him, because his family moved away, when we were like 16 or 17, I was like, oh, oh I like this guy. It's Roger. He's nice. Like, you let him whatever. off the hook? Yeah, it was the end of it. So I don't even know if I ever brought up to him, like, do you remember you used to bully me? But a, a thousand percent, if you can get him on this show... So Get him you on. know his last name, so we might be able yeah. to contact him via social media or something like that. I could call, and then I could have him come on and talk about how he used to bully. Yeah, do you Scott know Scott probably knows how to get in touch with him? Really? I would think. I, I love it. It, Look, if anybody does, Scott does. E- even if he just calls in. Um, but I would love to have him right in front of me and take him to task for it. The uh, the uh, where because where are all me. those bullies I mean, now? These texts my mom sends me are they're sick. Yeah, they're sick. Go ahead, go. She texts me, my, your orchid is coming back. Well, they're perennial and they take a while, so <laughs> I get it. She it took an, an orchid thing. from my house that was dying, and she's nursing it back. Maya lost my orchids already. I mean, Jesus Christ. I'm not making a joke. I have four. Right. God bless, as, <laughs> as you would say. Um, today's battle, by the way. They were four, four. four orchids? Yeah. Wait, why is that so funny? Well, I guess, it did, I guess it sounded like it was a joke, and then it wasn't. And just the fact that I have four orchids is funny to her. Amusing. Why is it When so I... <laughs> They die, but they come back. So you got to keep the pot, and there's four sticks that shoot out of it all year long. Okay. And I don't like points. So I had to bury it in the corner. And then this year, it was the first year they would come back, and only two or three came back. One didn't. It's only you could have I a got problem a gift as a gift, and it was a lovely gift. It was a nice centerpiece on my table for months. It's a beautiful flower. When yeah. I bought my house. As far as flowers go, it's top notch. When I bought my house, the realtors or the previous owners went the extra mile, and peppered plants around the house <laughs> so i felt welcome <laughs> this what? is after you, they already had you 
No, I yeah, bought the house. You yeah, they already had you. We're done. And so you afterwards you're like, I, I, I wanted to feel good about this transaction. And so they went and peppered plants. I walked into the bathroom. There they was peppered plants or, there was a potted house. orchid in the bathroom. It was lovely. They wanted, they wanted me to feel good, so they peppered plants around the house. There was and there was a sign on the wall. There was a sign on the wall when you walked in that said, Welcome home. Wow. Like a framed thing that they put up. Really? That's presumptuous. They went they went like the extra mile. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Folks, it's the holiday season, and it's time to give some gifts. It's also time to receive some gifts. Does your family give? Do, the, do you guys exchange Pollyanna, whatever? Look, here's what I'm getting at. Why don't you give yourself a gift? The gift of what? The gift of therapy. Why is therapy good? Well, therapy is something that helps you find the greatest gift of all. Quiet in the head, <laughs> being centered inside the heart and, and the, 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 this area Is that here. where you, when you use this, because I know that you do and I know that you like it, is that what you're trying to achieve, quiet in the head? I'm trying to achieve quiet in the head. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's look, a lifelong battle for is there else. any Is there anything louder than in here? No. You know what I mean? Absolutely not. So I, I find that using BetterHelp and, and doing therapy sessions with a therapist on BetterHelp helps me, especially at a time of year like this, where it gets hectic, where it gets noisy, where it gets stressful. Take some time to rest gives Take me the time, time out to rest. during a tough moment and also by the way you silence up here and you start to focus on what's really important about this time of year 100 percent. you know what i mean so if you are thinking of starting therapy why not give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime and that's no additional charge um, in the season of giving give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Taste Buds today. You're going to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Taste Buds. I'm going to say something. You tell me what comes to mind immediately. America's number one meal kit. Hello Fresh? That's exactly right. Hello! With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip trips to the grocery store and you count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Say hello to stress-free holiday season with the help of Hello Fresh. Skip the grocery store and save time with easy, tasty recipes delivered to your door. After I like, a full day of work, there's only so much you could do. You want to come I, home, yeah. especially during the holidays, yes. and start that whole that whole to-do yeah. of understanding what you want to do and then culling the ingredients. And, and by the, the way, you want to be standing in a checkout line, you want to be sipping cocoa. Yeah. You want to be sipping cocoa. That's right. Right? And, and also, sometimes it's hard for people to come up with their own wholesome dinner or a good meal. But with HelloFresh, you could turn busy weeknights into memorable meal times with delicious practical options designed to save you time, like their 15 minute meals show. Yeah, that's great, man. Tons of recipes. They got over 45 recipes and more than 100 seasonal add on items to choose from every single week. Uh, it's just really great. Uh, they, they have something that everybody in the house will enjoy. HelloFresh is, look, any, anybody helping you find more time for yourself to breathe and less time to worry about doing other stuff you don't feel like you need to be doing, they're, they're gems. And by the way, if you think it's just dinner, you're wrong. It's also breakfasts and, and lunches, and they have 10-minute lunch preps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're doing it right. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Taste Buds and use breakfast code. Just started, I just started using the breakfast, just want to let you know. And I had these uh, like, like little sausage and egg type of like things they sent. It was delicious. I'm like literally re-upped already. All right. The, yeah. I love it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBudsFree and use code TasteBudsFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash TasteBudsFree with code TasteBudsFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Folks, game time. When it's time to game... Folks, game time. <laughs> Keep it. Yeah. I right. love it. When it's time to go to the game or the theater or the comedy show or the rock and roll show or the hip hop show, you're going to want to use game time. Or game sports. Time. Or the sports thing. Well, I already said when it's time to go to the game. Oh, you, oh the game. Yeah. yeah. So listen, folks, I'll game time, race. it's an app. And what it lets you do is it lets you buy tickets whenever you feel like it. Okay. But 
really it comes in handy if you want to not have to buy these things way in advance. And it's going to let you know that you are guaranteed getting the best price for the best seats available. Uh, and it's also going to show you an all-in price. No hidden fees, nothing like that. The number you see on that screen, that is what you are paying. It drives me crazy when I go buy a ticket and I go, oh, wow, like only 48 bucks. That's pretty good. And then by the time you get to check out, it's like $270. You You're like, the most too. What, what when, is this? When you buy by touching a highlighted section, like, you know, 200 section, and then you touch it, and then it's like, all right, we'll give you seats there. I'm like, where, where, where are the seats? Are they, are they up here? Are they up there? I can't stand that. Yeah. One thing they do is they, you can see the view from your seat and what you just said, all in prices. And it's like, it literally is two taps to buy the tickets. And they have a guarantee. Basically, the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price because if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of that difference. And I also want to point out something that we, we don't often say when we talk about game time. The exclusive flash deals are great. There are exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football and basketball and baseball and concerts, all this, every live event you can think of. I That's, sometimes I watch that thing last minute and I'm just refreshing. Yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, anyway, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code TASTEBUDS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Taste buds, T A S T E B U D S, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I don't know if it was just the owners or if it was the realtor. You don't even know who that, 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 that never even met out. these people. Wow. But there was an orchid in my bathroom that died within almost seconds of me walking into that. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know how to I keep plants alive. You need sun. There's sun in the bathroom. What is it? What do you think? Wait, yeah. what, was, it, was it potted? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it was positive. It was like cutting in a vase. It looked like very, it looked like very like Mr. Miyagi style. Yeah. Like it was very like, there was like little pebbles in There's the pot. sun in the bathroom. What are you talking about? There's sun. You're not supposed to put an orchid in direct sunlight. You're not. <laughs> Why do you know that? Because I looked up how to keep and it alive still and I still screwed it up But somehow. what I'm saying is not everybody has a window in their bathroom. Many bathrooms No, mine are, does. All right. Yeah. But you were like this sun in. I feel like not having a, new year, a window in your bathroom is a New York thing that okay. we've all accepted. All right. That's not normal for okay. any other part of the country. <laughs> like, I got a room. I got a bedroom in my house with no windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, it's I had insane. one too, and it was the only bedroom in the apartment. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, the city. You're like, it's normal to just have a sink in the kitchen and nowhere else. Yeah, you know, it's it's so nuts. Um, so the the merch. Just to go back to it, Rod, that's Rod. Just squeeze my head. Yes. We might get him in here, and we might get him under the, under the spotlight. What else we got, Davey? That would be huge. On the merch. Uh, we have the, as you said, the logo. You're going to go to nopresh.com, nopreshnetwork.com slash, slash merch. We got the logo. We got the... We got a re-up on the No Matter What Happens, I Love You, but now you can get it on like seven different colors. Yeah, you and can one get- one of them is a canary yellow that is just grand, if you ask me. Yeah, I love it. You can get any of these on multiple colors. So we had an image, we had some artwork drawn up that we made limited edition um, uh, signed uh, numbered 8 by 10s for for the uh, live stream, which yes. sold out in 10 minutes. I think it was 250 of them. Yes. They sold out in 10 minutes. Yes. We have that now on a shirt, yes. which is really cool. And then we have a picture of me, and a real picture of me, you, and Chris uh, at Chris's oh, birthday. That's, oh, this, you know what's great about that picture? Oh, God. <laughs> this is, this is uh, moments before, and they put a clip out of it. This is moments before I left there, went directly to J and Ari's live taping and crashed the taping. Who took that photo? I think V did. Oh, right. Really? Look at that. We photo cred goes to V. I gotta say, none of us look great in that picture. It's hard to see from here. It's a good picture. I look I look like a full fledged drunk in this picture. Uh Chris This is the second time you are on a shirt. Right, because you got you got you made those Sleepy Joe hoodies. I have. Oh wait, I forgot remember? about the Sleepy Joe hoodies. You don't remember that? Uh, no. Oh yeah, you told Sleepy Joe. I forgot. Oh, on Halloween. Yeah. In a Batman, you took a picture, and then we put you put it on a hoodie. Yeah. I forgot about that. Um, Everybody forgot about. <laughs> you look, Sal. I don't know how else to say it. Like a woman. <laughs> Man, I feel like a woman. 
Let me, uh, can you zoom there's, in? There's a womanish quality to you in this in this that, photo. That quality? Can we zoom? I don't mean that it's bad to be a woman, really? but that's I, not the look you're going for. You got a little bit of a Cagney and Lacey vibe going in this. I look like a female detective from 1979. I'm saying you look like Tyne Daly a little bit in this picture. Tyne Daly? <laughs> Broadway's Tyne Daly? Huh? Broadway's Tyne Daly? She's on Broadway currently no, in a revival not. of Doubt with Lev Schreiber. No way. She is. Is it Lev? I thought it was Liev. Uh, <laughs> Liev, Lev, I don't uh, know. All right. Pat Walsh texted me. He texted me. It said, uh, it was just a poster. It said, Doubt, a parable starring Lev Shriver and Tyne Daly. And I wrote back, this is why we're friends. Only you and I understand why this is funny for some reason. <laughs> okay. And he just wrote back, I assumed she died years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, that, no one even knows what you're talking about. Nothing not, against Tyne Daly, not, not, not by, by the way. Room. Nothing no, no, against not Tyne Daly. But even in, in, our, in our, our podcast listeners, they don't know who Cagney and Lacey is. Uh, I am going to go see that because I love the movie Doubt, and I want to see the play, and I'm a fan of both of those actors, and I'm going to go see it. Well, there you have it. Now, folks. Chris. And you think I look like I'm there. You gotta, I'm saying there's a vibe. Can you pull up a picture of Tyne Daly? <laughs> there's a vibe. <laughs> then and now? No, just, just to that. I think it's T-Y-N-E. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird name. So you think I look like her? Hold on. There's a little bit. Let's click back. She let's looks wonderful, back. by the way. There's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really wait, think? Wait, wait, show her on Cagney and Lacey. You can't show her now with the gray hair. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. That lined up. That lined up even more than I thought it would. I think it's because we're in seventies attire and we have the same color hair. Other than that, the I'm haircut not sure. too. You got the you got the same color. Oh, that's fucking. That's I can't believe that you pulled Tyne Daly out. It was uh, and then Chris. Let's go back to Chris. Chris looks like 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 uh, there's something like what's going on. Chris has got I, I a thing going I, I on in this zoom, picture. I got a zoom. Bit. He's got a. Uh, <laughs> He first, he looks like the devil or something. Look at his down it's a devilish, his it's a devilish grin. It's a devilish grin for yeah. sure. Yeah. And and what are you doing? Who are you pointing to? What are you doing there? Oh, we're pointing to the ice penis. Oh, I didn't even notice the ice penis. <laughs> I, I didn't even notice it. I didn't, I, I would have bought that shirt and not, you know what? People are going to buy that shirt and not notice there's a huge ice penis. On I wouldn't have noticed. It, it just blends into the background. You don't see it. Did oh. you know there was an ice penis? You took it. That's fine. Did you realize there was an ice penis on it, Pimp? No. You didn't. I think it's fine. It doesn't matter, right? No, no, it doesn't matter at all. I'm just saying that's hysterical. Oh, the ice penis is because there was a... The, he had... You're what's point, that called? You're both pointing at it. And I didn't notice it was there. And neither did I. I. I thought I was just doing like this, like 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 making like a hip hop pose. Okay. And, I, and then I realized, oh, no, I'm pointing at that ice penis. <laughs> it was... What is that called? A luge? A shot luge? <laughs> Chris had a shot luge at his birthday party that Jasmine had bought him. This was a surprise thing, and uh, it was uh, it was a penis that you had to put your mouth on the tip of. I said what? I was, did it say us? Yeah, I I uh, no surprise here. I decided not to engage. I I hit that thing like <laughs> six times, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um. Oh, so okay. Well, we got to get to the, the battle. Um, um, we're probably pretty well. What, where are we at? No pressure. Network okay. dot com slash merch. Check it out. So the battle today is a Christmas themed battle. It's gift giving. Which do you prefer, receiving or giving? Mm -hmm. uh, we are aware that receiving is. Going to seem selfish. That that's going to seem selfish. The and, uh, you know, but we really try to push over the answer. Honestly, don't just say giving because you think it's the way to sound nice. Right, one hundred percent. Like I genuinely feel the way I feel, and not anyone who knows me knows that. I actually don't even like necessarily receiving. I actually don't even necessarily like it per se. Okay. And there's a you know because you, you more so than not. Like for example, my mom texts me the other day. She's like, "What do you want for Christmas?" I'm like, "My, I have no idea." I don't know what to tell you. I don't want you to waste your money on me, uh, you know. And then what happens is she'll go and get something and give it to me, and I feel even more guilty because I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And then I either got to return it or keep it. 
And for me, I'd rather not go through all that hubbub at all. My mom and dad will, they do the same thing. My mom asks me every year, starting on December 1st, she starts pressuring me literally like every day, like, send me your list. I do the same thing every year. I send her an Amazon list that I can share with her. I make sure every single thing on it is prime ready. Yeah. And I go, this. these are the things that would, would be okay. Uh, she, she chooses from that? She usually, it's not usually a ton of stuff. Okay. She will ruin it every year by by as I'm opening the first present going, <laughs> I got you just everything on the list <laughs> and takes all the surprise out of it. I wish you would just pick like a couple things and I'd be like, oh, wow, cool. But like, I'm just trying to, I'm not saying to her, buy me these things. I'm saying like, I'm just trying to make it easy for right, her. Right, right. Um, of course. But her and my dad will go off the res a little bit and and buy me a couple things they, they think yeah, I like. Yeah, they'll take, yeah. And usually, some of the, what's the, their success with those? The one thing I the the one non success one that I had to tell my mom, you got to stop with these. She was buying me a calendar every year, and 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 the I, wall one, yeah, a hanging calendar, a hanging calendar. And but the the, the themes of these calendars were, were terrific. They were batch. Can I guess? Yeah. How many have you gotten? She's done it for a few I years. I mean, 10, 10 that I can remember. Oh, so you got it every year. Oh, yeah. It was a gift every My mom would say to me, you know I had to get you a calendar. You know, I, oh, that's so cute. It is all sweet, right, so, yes. So, all right. So do you remember a lot of them? So if I take start taking guesses? I remember two of them okay. in particular. Okay. I don't know if she got cutesy with it and got you like dogs, and that's the joke. Or if not- There's no joke to any of them. There's no joke. No, not it wasn't one a joke to her, but- could it be something like dogs if it's not a joke to it her? It could be. Okay. So then that, that opens up a wide, because yeah. I was going to be like architecture or whatever. No. All right. That would be nice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dogs. There was one that was either dogs or cats. Okay. And I said to her as she handed me, I go, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's a good thing to hear when you're giving a yeah, gift. I go, I go. That's the risk I take giving. <laughs> I go, I go, I don't understand, mom. Why did you get me this? That was the last year. That was okay. the last year. It was like two years ago no, I hit or it. three years ago. So let me ask you a I question. Go, but, but, but wait, I go, I go why, why, did, why, did you, why did you get me the, the animal-themed one? And she goes, I just thought it would brighten your day to see it, to look at a dog every day. I go, Mom, listen, I understand, that's a nice thought. It won't. And I don't see, need now, a calendar anymore. Just please, I use my phone. I'll, I'll never use it. Please stop yeah, wasting your money fun. on these. Yeah. yeah. You know? I, I probably, in that moment, she would have given me the power to associated to that moment and that gesture and I would have probably kept it and every time I looked at it as ridiculous as it was for me to have that it would brighten my day because she got it to brighten my day that's the difference between you and me <laughs> <laughs> you are well within the power to do that I, I I never even thought of it that way as you're saying it I'm like I should have kept all the calendars that would have been fun to be able to be like and then there's this one yeah but, let uh, me think of another one you want to guess again yeah okay I'm going to say, like, um, beaches. No. No. The other one that I can remember, it's to me, it's so funny. It's so funny. Right, hint? I love games. It's you know? just, <laughs> like, when I looked at it, I was like, she thinks I'm 11 years old. Like, this is insane. Star Wars. No. No, I would have liked that. <laughs> I would have liked that. Or, like, you know. Like if it was like comic book themed or something? Right, right. No. Let me just tell you. It'll okay. be funnier. Cars. <laughs> <laughs> it was different cars. You're not known to like cars, right? No, it was like it was like Ferraris or something. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I'm not a that's, child. That's, this that's, is crazy. That's flying food. I should have got that. <laughs> I think there was a time the calendars might have been a little more spot on. Okay. Some of them have definitely just been like calendars. Like there's nothing, <laughs> I mean, like, like just a straight up, like there's no even theme to it. Religious? Any religious? No religious ones, but like, you know, I, I, I'm shocked she never got me one of like women in bikinis. Like it, it was like, it was like so crazy. Cause I, they go with the, they have ones with women in bikinis with the cars as well. She could have doubled down. Yeah. This one had no chicks. It was just the cars. Um, but I will say this, they will nail it on certain things. Okay. So they give me a nail. Oh, dude! One, one. I'll give you two of the two, two of the best ones. Um, I had no coffee mugs. They came to my apartment for Thanksgiving one year, and I didn't have enough coffee mugs. Mm -hmm. 
and my dad got me uh, this set of Star Wars coffee mugs, Ooh. and it was like it it was like nine. Oh, it was like oh wow, yeah, it was like Luke, Yoda, Vader, Emperor, Darth. Like it was like you know, or it was it was awesome. I was like oh that's a good that's a good gift, and then. Another year, they gave me two coffee table books. One, and they're beautiful books. About cars and dogs? About cars and dogs. One was the complete visual history of DC Comics, and the other was the complete visual history of Marvel Comics. Like, that's an awesome gift. They paid attention. Yeah. Like, and I have those, like, displayed. Yeah. Like, that's a fun bit book for guests to pick up and flip through or whatever. In my house right now, it's a case of... Uh, the drama comes from a case of too many mugs for quite some time now. The what did you say? Too many mugs in my house right now. You got too many We're, mugs. There's bickering about the mugs now. Really? Because you know you you know mugs are like umbrellas too. Like you sometimes you'll buy one you're like oh what a cool mug, but a lot of times you just get them there and like as a gift or like they just I don't know how mugs get to be, but I I, I have like probably over twenty mugs. I have a rule with mugs and with. Uh, um, Why is it called the mug? With mugs and with cocktail glassware, not not your drinking every day, but like stuff that I have like in this house, like I'm setting up these this bar area. Um, beer mugs of the late 18th century. Okay, according to Webb Garrison in Why You Say It, beer mugs of the late 18th century were often shaped like human heads, and oh, a not especially attractive person often bore. A resemblance to a face on a mug. Oh, that's where it became... Oh, my God. That's why they call your face your mug. Oh, wait. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, wait. No, that's why a face is called a mug. This isn't why right. is a mug called right, a mug. Right, right. Why is a mug called a mug? A cup becomes a mug when liquid... I hate when they tell you shit like that. When liquid is poured in... Thank you, guys. With liquid, there's really... Uh, mug, meaning a cup used for drinking, dates back to the mid-16th century. Its origin, uncertain. Linguists have suggested it came from low German... Merk? Muck? M mug, or the German word? Though the origin is unknown. I don't know. It's weird. It's just a Swedish or German word. That's boring. Dude... So I have a, so anyway I have a feeling you are going to be rev, like appalled by this what I'm okay. about to say, but trust me it's it's a good way to do it. I will only buy mugs, mm -hmm. coffee mugs, and cocktail like stuff for booze sure. from thrift stores because uh -huh. you go in, you will always find a unique yeah that's cool I'm you cool know that. yeah, yeah. I, I wash the shit out of it yeah. but. But like that thrift stores where you're gonna find like you're like look at these two rocks glasses that yeah. have like this weird etching oh, yeah, in them sure. whatever yeah, so yeah. so that's I always go like for so that's there's your mug answer yeah I I got a my one of the ashtrays I use we got a we got all old ashtrays oh the, they're the best yeah. for ashtrays yeah, yeah 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 so we got too many mugs so now like some we purchased some I've accumulated from things like if I'm a gift like this you know or going on something or whatever it is people send them and now there's too many and now. It's a it's a fight about who's gonna throw out their mugs. Not a fight, but like, and and it's a stalemate. It's been a stalemate for, for well, months. Well, who's gonna throw out their? You you each get to keep the same amount. How, why is that a fight? I don't know. Wow. I don't know who has more. I really don't. I just know there's too many, and I'm always being asked to get rid of mine. And recently, I think she got rid of two more. We're at the point where the mugs are. We're stacking mugs on mugs, but they have handles, and I'm I'm really afraid of them breaking. Uh, my buddy Jim Pinkstone, who I've <laughs> mentioned on the podcast, what are you laughing at? The name? You just it it. Some, it I like the way you speak. Okay, thank you. His entire he and his wife, uh, their house. Mrs. Pinkstone. They're Mrs. Pinkstone. Uh, they have their house, their entire cabinet, like all of their glass, all of it. Every single glass, mug, juice glass, anything is something like unique that they got from some one cool of one, place. everyone. 
every single thing. It's That's like cool. it's like the Burger King Return mm-hmm. of the Jedi glass, the Hamburglar glass, the whatever. Like it's they have the greatest drinking ware selection I've glasses. ever seen. Yeah, I have them all saved. They're wrapped in like newspaper and in a box, like the so Star cool. Wars ones, mm-hmm. the the McDonald's ones. Yeah, yeah, their glasses are so cool. I swear, when I stay with them, I get anxiety when I go to get a drink. Yeah, because I open, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to take any of these. That's why we I'm don't use them. to break them. I'm gonna. Yeah, break she's them. always like, put them out. Use them. Right. Enjoy them. Right. Which she has a point, but I'm like, they're from the 70s. You know, like, I, I, if I if I break one of them, I'm going to be so well, upset. I just found out you're not supposed to actually drink. I forget who was just telling me this. I think it was my friend Caitlin. You're not supposed to drink out of those glasses because there's like a there's like a, a lead or something in the paint. <laughs> yeah, that, that you should just have them on display and that's it. Okay, well, that's a huge thing. I'm not sure which ones exactly, uh, but... Is something here? Because I want to get back into this battle. The battle. Okay, so, all right, let's do the chant. Time two. B-A-T-T... Oh, boy. Somebody's been away. Time two. B-A-T-T-L-E, buds. Todd Barry was here. I've never seen someone less interested in a chant in my entire life than Todd Barry. The, uh... Um, okay. So the battle is giving versus receiving. I am team giving. Sal is team. I'm sorry. I am team receiving. Sal is team giving. Um, the reason that we have the reminder there with are you garbage is, and it's one of the one of my. Pr- I love giving, but one of my problems with giving is is what we talked about when are you garbage is here, which is there is a pressure that I feel when it comes to the economics of giving a gift. And this also applies to receiving. I have friends that buy way too expensive gifts, and their opinion is, buddy, I have it. I can afford it. Let me share it with you. But when you're receiving it, Mm. it makes me... So I do a thing every year with my four buddies uh, from back home. Scott, who I mentioned is one of them. Jim, who I mentioned is one of them. And then my buddies, Jamie and Dan. We do a thing called Eve Eve every December 23rd. We do a bar crawl, then we go back to one of our houses, shit faced, and Don't give each other presents. I love a tradition. We've been doing it for twenty two years yeah, or something. It. It's awesome. Scott, without fail, we, we we're like you know hundred dollar range. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're getting you know you get a DVD, a Blu ray box set from somebody, or you get you know oh I got you these really cool comic books that I thought you you know whatever. Then you open Scott's mm-hmm. and it's like. You know how you love Frank Zappa? Here's an autographed guitar pick that I got from his estate, and it's framed. <laughs> and you're like, come on, I dude. do this to my family. So, so it's awesome, but you're like, it's, you're like, dude, I can't fuck with this. Yeah. Like, you're going, you know? So are you garbage? When they were here, we were talking about when you, if you're garbage, which I am, when you go to a person's home, you bring a gift sometimes. And Pepsi. You contribute something. Yeah. And garbage people like myself tend to overspend on that gift or buy too much of it because you are afraid that you d- don't belong there or or or. or so what, give me an example. Of something you buy too much of. I'll it. give you a great example. It was the first time I ever came to your house um, when we had that big sleepover right before COVID started. It was like you, me, Jay, Ari, right? Yeah, everyone crashed. And yeah. and and. I had it was I was kind of being brought into the group. We were friendly and friends, but I was not part of the crew, and I was being brought in. And I spent like I spent like a hundred fifty dollars on like Entenmann's and cookies. Oh, and I remember that. that. It was so insane. That much money? Yeah, because I bought, dude. I bought so, and we didn't eat any of it. But like, I'll do that because right. I start to get in my head, and I'm like, if I show up and I'm not contributing enough, I'm just, you know, you was walking, you're like. <laughs> is the Entenmann's line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so like, that's an example. Okay. So there's, there's, a, there's a pressure with giving. Okay. So the thing about the giving, I, I don't really focus on the, the, co- the cost, good or bad. You know, I, I focus on, like, um, there's people that I know I'm giving gifts to, uh, Christmas time or when, when have, whatever. I also like if something I see, I think someone would like it, I will just buy it. Right, like it doesn't have to be like anything for anything, right? Like I think I was, I was, you know that um, photographer Danny Clinch. Nope. He's a famous like rolling like uh, rock like music photographer. I went to, uh, I he was I was in Soho and he was having like this signing of all his works, and I passed by and I saw him and I actually had one that of ODB 
that someone got oh, from that, you. Oh, yeah, that, I know that picture. Yeah, yeah. and um, I saw, he, he used to be Fish's photographer. Okay. And so I bought a fish print and he signed it and I got it for Fenoya because he's a big fish guy. Fino you know, I, I was like so excited. I get more excitement in knowing that I have a really good gift that the person will enjoy than getting a gift. Well, there's... Here's I, get, I, I love it. I just love to make people happy and I love to like show that there's thought put into something. So for me, I give you a running list of, in, my note, in my notes on my phone throughout the year. If I see something I think someone will like. So when Christmas time comes, I'm not racking my brain and I have stuff that's a deep cut that I know. I try to do that too. Yeah. I try to do that too. This year, Christmas got botched by COVID the last two years for me. So I am really behind the eight ball this year. I, I was I'm so terrified it's gonna get ruined again that I have you not gotta act been, quick, babe, because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get screwed with those shippings. I know, I know. Well, I got one person's gifts in order in line. My parents, the old whatever, I'm gonna digress. The okay. So I actually enjoy giving quite a bit the older I am. But I will say this about the and I don't mean but you're, this I'm giving. You're receiving. No, I know, yeah. I know. But this is what I was gonna say about your giving. I and I, I swear to you, I don't mean this in a Whatever, you, you you have you, you I think the, the let's put it this way. I'll put it in my own terms. The older I get and the more financially stable I become, the less receiving becomes the more fun part of it. Sure, I still like it though a lot. Right, but I you know now you've been you've been you know uh, 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 the show has been. The show's been big for a while, right? So I feel like that probably had an influence when you get to a point where you're like, I have what I need and I can, you know what I mean? Right, right. As far as getting stuff? Yeah. It's it's yeah. more exciting than to take some of what you have and go, let me let me do a really cool thing for a yeah, friend or whatever, we, we, right? We, are, we also are attaching like uh, value, monetary value to gifts when that doesn't have to be the case you're at right, all. You're right. So it's not something, that, oh, what do you get for a person who could buy whatever they want? No. It's like, it's also, no. I'd be it's blown away if yes. I got something... That didn't cost anything. Yes. That was just very, very thoughtful. I agree. I agree. The thought also becomes the mon. I hate the monetary part of it. Yeah. With I'll speak on it from As receiving. Fact, I hate the Some of my favorite gifts part. ever in my life were not gifts that you could, or, or even if they were cheap, they were like, you know. You know like, what, like one of the craziest gifts I ever got it was one of the most thoughtful gifts I ever got. P Pete Holmes and I love Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, like we've been quoting Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross to each other mm -hmm. since we've become friends for 20 years whatever we we have quoted it ad nauseum every line shout out to pete holmes new special on netflix yeah. it was really funny yes check it out we uh we like to, to the point where like we we have a game we play where i'll text him and i'll be like i'll be like uh uh, uh you know i think maybe you're having a, a effects from the hitting your head that's probably right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're searching for words more I'll be like, often than I'll not. I'll be like, Glengarry Glen Christmas. You, and then you have to take a Glengarry Glen Ross line and make it a Christmas reference. Okay. And it's so challenging, but it, we we scream laughing at it. We okay. scream laughing at it, whatever. So anyway, there's this scene in when Alec Baldwin's giving the spiel to the guy where he goes, you know what it takes to sell real take? It takes brass balls. And he yeah. pulls the brass balls out of the suitcase. Yeah. Pete got me. Those brass balls, Amazing. not the ones from the movie, right, right. but he found those right. and gave them to me. And I'm like, this is such an insane gift. Like, I it's know. so thoughtful. And it also makes you think of that, you know, it's that, that's yeah. the perfect gift. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So I should stretch, judge. I, I should sell them. They're probably, well, is brass worth money? <laughs> is that, are, you, are you asking me or is that a quote from the movie? No, I'm saying I could pawn <laughs> these if I'm at a pinch, but I don't think brass <laughs> is worth anything. The, um, where, where are you at? Okay, um, so look, there's let me let me talk about pros of receiving. The pros of receiving, I mean, look, it doesn't matter how old you get. When dude. someone lands it, it's great. When someone lands but it, it's in great. a general and, sense, and, but somebody I don't want you to waste your money on me. I actually feel <laughs> guilt receiving. I really do. I, I I attach guilt to it sometimes. I feel bad, especially if it's coming from like my parents or you know whatever. Or like not my. It's not that I feel good, but like I I more I'm like please don't don't spend your money. It's okay. Like I don't want you to. But then I want to give that. them ten gifts. You know I what I mean? I get that. And I actually I've been called out on that. Like it's like you should be able to accept it if you're gonna go ahead and go overboard and give everybody else gifts. I will say this. I will say this. The there 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 is no. I, I, there's just nothing though like receiving a package 
a, you know, the, the being handed a thing that well, you the get element to unwrap. Of surprise, I, I lose completely <laughs> in my argument. Uh, but I get to see you enjoy the element of surprise. Yes. So I'm enjoying it. I'm, we're enjoying the same thing. If I give you a gift that you love and I love giving it to you, the, the heights are there. There's, there's the, the anticipation of opening something. They, they do it on Seinfeld when he gets the package mm -hmm. and, Cray, and he, doesn't, he, he refuses it. Yeah, yeah. Could be a bomb. And Kramer's yeah. like, come on, man. Everybody loves receiving a package. Like, th that's true. I get excited when packages for things I ordered show up. Yeah, I usually not forget. just because I'm happy the thing is here. I get excited about opening the box and yeah. looking at it for the first and all this stuff. There's, I don't know if there's any anticipation or excitement on planet Earth that matches what a present does to you. It's so fun. But it's so fun. Here's my touche: is that what I just said? It's like one of the happiest moments that I that I feel I can achieve too is when I have a thoughtful gift that I know someone's going to love. I'm so happy I thought of it. And I'm so excited to give it to them and see see you experience what you just said coming from me directly. That is, I'm, I'm right here's there. What, here's what I'll tell you you don't get with the giving side. Mm -hmm. You don't get to understand how much another person I got to wrap you. it. That sucks. I hate wrapping. It, that's, that's, that blows. I hate it. I use, it blows. I, a lot of times I use aluminum foil. No oh, you, scissors, no, scissors, you no tape. Asshole. What? <laughs> if it's small enough, I use aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Yeah, no scissors, no tape. It's shiny. Why am I? Do you get a Christmas aluminum? You talking about like Reynolds? I'm about Reynolds. <laughs> get out of here. Heavy duty. You trash. Heavy duty. <laughs> That's terrible. Why? That's terrible. I rap too. I do a very terrible job, but I I I I did that for I mean countless gifts I've put in, in, in aluminum foil. <laughs> Saying it out loud now. It it's really not, upsets me. No, 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 me. listen to me, bro. That's insane. Listen to me. All you need is the foil. First of all, you you spend extra on the good wrapping paper, and that usually includes some type of foil the leaf. good wrapping paper? Yeah, no, you what know is the good wrapping paper? Don't tell me you don't know this. Tears of wrapping paper. No, I go to Target, and I buy, like, fun stuff but that even says, at like, Target, ho, ho, ho. there's tears. And if you go any extra mile, it's probably less let me less in the roll, but it usually has gold, like a foil, shiny foil. So it, it has it in there. That's and you, you, you got to help me remember Adam Ferrara because it's a gift story. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You need help I'll remembering tell you, a lot. You need on help either remembering. side, this kind of wrapping paper sucks. Anything with the shine to it, where it's like it's almost like you wrapped it in like saran wrap. You know that shiny yeah. that wrapping paper sucks. If it is not the tear away paper, paper, yeah. Yeah, but I, babe, I would some take, of those I would have take plain leaf. brown paper. I, you know what? I love wrapping paper. I don't like wrapping gifts, but I love wrapping paper. I like looking under the tree and seeing all the of different course, kinds. That's what I'm saying. And scanning it and looking at it and all that stuff. And I love ripping open a gift. Okay? The part of receiving that I do like about it is I love when the gifts are ripped open. At Christmas, I'm a proponent. I, I'm a, a supporter of rip open the gift, throw the wrapping paper. Right. All night long. Right. I want to be walking in a sea of wrapping paper at my feet. Okay. Like a wrapping paper swamp. Okay. I love that. I have people in my family that don't, and that they literally hand you the gift, and they hold, they're holding a glad bag, a garbage bag. And then you wrap it, and they go, give me that, and they put it right into the bag. And I'm like, I, I'd like to They take bask. the paper back? No, no. Like, they throw it away. They don't yeah. leave it all oh, over yeah, the floor. yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediately. Yeah. I like to leave it... Sometimes on Christmas morning, if I'm at my parents' house on Christmas morning, sometimes we leave the paper out and the dogs like play in it. Yeah, that that's another thing I would like to ask as far as wrapping paper go. What do you do? You like to keep it all over the house, and or do you clean it after each one? I got OCD. I start like ah. I start like picking it up as soon as it hits the ground, and yeah. then I have to remind myself like, no, let the dog play with it or whatever for a minute. You also, let me tell you another thing with receiving. The pendulum swings both ways. You could also bomb big time, and then you put that person in a position to look you in the face and tell you they like it, and then you don't even know if they've taken it and ever used it and resold it and regifted it. We've look, all been there's nothing victim. worse than a bad gift, and there's nothing worse than the feeling. But what's worse, receiving a bad gift or the feeling you have when you realize you did a botched job on a gift give? Usually that, that feeling usually, sucks. Usually you don't know that. Unless you're very close with someone and they say, it. usually you receive the gift and you don't tell that person and then you, you, off, you offload Some it of the somewhere. only people that I give gifts to yeah. 
are these four guys I'm talking right, about, right. and then my parents, and then like I think we're at a point. You've been, you've bought me gifts. Yeah, I can't remember if I've ever bought you a Christmas present, but I certainly I would if I saw something that I thought you would enjoy. Yeah. But my my point is, is I I know immediately what those guys because it rotates. You have each one guy has the other guy, yeah, whatever yeah. one guy. I know immediately if I hit it or if I didn't. You, we've all gotten gifts that we regifted, right? And and, we've, and I'm sure we've all had given gifts that were regifted. Um, is when you regift something, and you think it sucks, how do you get the courage to give it as a gift to somebody else? What do you mean? So I get this gift. I'm like, this courage. is a terrible gift, yeah. right? It's a terrible gift, right? How's the person? Thank, yeah. thank you so much. But then I want to give it to somebody else, but it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. So I. I'm aware that I'm giving you a terrible gift. I'm regifting my terrible gift to you. I don't think I don't think that that's what have, it is. Which have, is another you sign. Brass balls. Yeah, that's another that's another Seinfeld too. The right. label maker, sure, where it keeps getting regifted. Yeah. The but I don't think that label that's, baby junior. I don't think that that's a thing. Or is, I think there's a version of that that works, which is you give me a thing. It's not for me. I'm not into it. But I'm like. You know that maybe Ven I think Venetia might actually like this. Mm. I, I wouldn't do that because then you'd you'd see me do it. Right. But let's say I had another podcast producer on another show <laughs> that I thought might like it. Did I you, would I would you ever catch someone regifting something you gave? One I one stands out to me. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I gave someone a gift, and but it was like a couple of years, a year to two years later, and I saw it uh, on eBay. How yeah. do you, wait, and you knew they it didn't were selling it? At all. It was just you knew they of, were selling it? Yeah. How? On eBay. But I'm saying, like, nobody on eBay is like, my name is, you know, my, hey, it's Mark Norman. Here's my eBay well, post. I, I it's know like, the person. Like, you knew their eBay handle is what I'm saying. I can't get into how I found out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. it, it's nothing, nothing uh, on my end. It's just like, I don't want to give away who it is. I got you. I got you. Wait. Um, but it didn't bother me. I, I was like, ah, that sucks. I thought but, they would like that. It didn't, because I, I, I gave other gifts too. Here is why. Here is why. I, I, this is my crowning argument for receiving over okay. giving. And, you and let's, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's do what? Go to uh, the phone. Here and then we'll go to the phone. Yeah. Okay. You don't know through giving how much another person loves you. But there is a moment sometimes when somebody gives you a gift where you realize how much they think about you. Well, and I would argue. That is an incredibly, incredibly beautiful moment. And I will just tell you a quick story. And it wasn't a birthday or... It's a nice dismount. Yeah. It wasn't a birthday or anything. Uh, I, was, I was out. Adam Ferrara, great comic. He and I have become very good friends. Um, he and I, like in the period where we were really becoming friends, we started like talking on the phone, having these deep like discussions. stuff. we went and got, it was, dude, I remember it was right before COVID. Mm -hmm. It was right before COVID. We went to a diner. It was Veselka. Love it. Yeah. We, and, and they were, they ended up being closed that day or whatever, but there was a guy outside and he was washing down. He Silent. was like, we had this hose and he was washing all this equipment off with it. And uh, Adam, Adam goes, he goes, let me show you something. He walked me around the corner. I saw the guy shooting. Everything. He goes, somebody coughed in here five minutes ago. <laughs> and we were laughing. <laughs> like, wouldn't it be funny if COVID got that ridiculous? Little did we know. And then like two weeks later, that's where it was at. Oh, God. You know, yeah, it was yeah. crazy. So uh, anyway, we went to a different place. And he kept talking all day about it. He's like, I got to go to Barnes & Noble. And I was like, all right. I missed the process of going to a bookstore and picking out a book. That's the best. So then we got to... We, we finished, he went and he's like, he's like, is there a Barnes and Noble? And he goes, yeah, yeah, there's that one right in Union Square. And he's like, all right, I got to go up there. You want to walk with me? And I'm like, yeah. So we're walking. It's a beautiful day. We're just talking about life, whatever. He's telling me about this book he wants to get, blah, blah, blah. We find it. He buys it. We walk outside and he goes, dude, today was great. He reaches in the bag and he hands me the book and he goes, that's for you. And like he spent all this time telling me about this book and how much it meant and why he wanted it and the philosophy right. and all this stuff. And then we go to the store and he's, he's really smoke screening me and he gives it to me. Cause he was like, this is all the stuff I hear you worrying about all the time. I want oh, you to wow. read this. It was so, like in that moment, dude, you could fucking cry. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. so that aspect of receiving, sorry for the F that, a, that aspect of receiving a gift 
there's a beauty in giving, but I don't know that you can find intimately understand in one instant how much a person truly thinks okay, about you. I'll dismount real quick. Actually, I just got a gift a couple of weeks ago that made me cry. My buddy Mike got uh, the Vic made. Uh, he got a model made of the Vic. And, and I was like, this is an insane, insane thing idea like uh, it's so it was so like you yeah. know put my center so anyway, but yeah, I that was say, beautiful um, and nate's <laughs> <laughs> yeah can i say nate's text or when oh, nate's yeah, yeah i had to move Sal, i had to move tickets less now so I'll text us a picture of the model, and Nate just responded. He goes, and not the show's not sold out inside the model either. <laughs> <laughs> we on the group text. And that was really funny. Um, it was really, really funny. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I would just argue real quick that yeah. like, if I'm giving a gift of that magnitude to someone, yeah. I do know them that well, and I do know, like you're saying, it does, I don't know how much you love me if I'm giving you the gift. When you receive it, you could tell how much that person loves you. Yeah. But I'm saying if I'm given a gift like that anyway, it's because I already understand how, how sure, much. Sure, sure. Like there's it. a huge thing. And that's the thing. If I were to get you there's something. No, there's no losers here. There's no losers. Okay. There's no losers. Wouldn't it be funny if it was 50-50? Well, listen, I know, I, I know one or two losers in my life that <laughs> hate the idea of exchanging presents so much that buy, that buy the worst presents I've ever all right, name names or we got to go to the phone? <laughs> Let's go to the phone. <laughs> All right. Garlic Skin says, I bet DeRosa gives out action figures as adults to, as Christmas gifts. You're right. I'd rather give because I don't like receiving shitty gifts and pretending to be excited. There you go. The feeling of joy I've gotten from really getting someone a great gift has always stuck with me more than most gifts I received. So I've got a very well thought out. Giving, getting gifts is nice, but I prefer to give... Uh, I'm going to get creamed. I love to craft and make personal gifts. Gift giving is my love language. As I, as I have been told, it is mine. You know, that's one of them. You're, that's a real thing. Yeah. What? Gift giving is a love language. I, oh. I'll tell you, I, my birthday is November 6th. Since I can remember, remember, all the money I got on my birthday, November 6th, I would use to buy my family Christmas gifts every single year. I've been buying them gifts since I'm like five. Really? Yeah. Wow, you are one of those kids. I, I I don't know what's wired up here to you know to, for me to feel good like by doing that, but dude, every single person is saying <laughs> I prefer to give. All right, okay. Look, these are the show boaters. We'll see in the vote because <laughs> I have a feeling people is this gonna might. Be, is this gonna be a hundred percent to zero? Will this well, be? Will this be the biggest? Do we know what the biggest was in history? I think it was like not that long ago. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What are you going to say out loud? These are the people speaking out loud. We got a lot of anonymous votes in that thing where That's, we might oh, see true, receive true, pops up. True. I'd said be honest, search yourself on this on this poll because it's okay to say it doesn't mean you're selfish. You could still like which do you prefer? I know. Prefer. But this is like the Oscars, in my opinion. Everybody goes, oh, it doesn't matter if I win. I just want to be, oh, bullshit. You want to win. So that's the thing. Bullshit. You like to get a present. We all like to give, but it's fun to get presents. What, right now, what do you think this percentage is? It's got to be 90-10, right? It's got to be 90s. It's, it's, it's 100 zero right now. I didn't see one thing that said I liked receiving presents. Once we hit 80s, it's like, it's like, it's like, whoa. I think I know. All right. Pimpy, here we go. Drum roll. 4, Humble pie. Votes. Wow. Much closer than Much we closer than we thought. Okay. Gift giving, 68.2% takes it to receiving a gift at 318 That was actually a, 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 a normal kind of That wasn't bad. Battle. I thought you were gonna get walloped. No, I thought so too. All right. Uh, I still love you, babe. Love you too. Taste buds, they come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the